Hello, it is Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. We have a Sunday puzzle today, so a large grid, a themed grid, and we have an explanatory note relating to today's theme. So um, I've not yet actually read it, so we'll, we'll have to examine that and determine what might be in store for us, thematically speaking. Anyway, this um, explanatory edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by David Innes, Josh Lucas, as well as, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the inimitable Connor O'Neill, and the infallible Cynthia Toms. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for directly supporting this channel and making it a sustainable part of my daily work, for which I am extremely grateful. Thank you for that. And, uh, and thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. If you do so, you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So please do enjoy that. And I just remembered I said I was going to solve the uh, July New York Times monthly bonus puzzle soon. So maybe I'll, I'll, uh, maybe I'll try and get to that today if I have time. I really would like to get that out to patrons. Um, all right. So... Uh, do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and go check out the Daily Solve Discord chat server where you can um, communicate with other members of this community, solve their crosswords, create your own crosswords for them to solve and give uh, feedback on other people's and uh, share your Wordle scores and that sort of thing. Uh, and just, well, I suppose the main thing is just discussing the Daily New York Times crossword in there. All right, let's move on to today's uh, today's puzzle. This is, as I said, a Sunday puzzle, and it's very large, and it does have some kind of complicated theme. It was constructed by Tom McCoy, who has constructed some uh, 30-something uh, puzzles for the New York Times crossword, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So now let's, let's read this note. Seven clues in this puzzle relate to their answers in a manner for you to discover. Standard clues for these answers appear below in mixed order. Interesting. Accounting total, communicating with, in parentheses, leg cramp, Peyton to Eli Manning, showing gratitude, unlikely election winner, and where golfers practice short strokes. So these will all be clues that fit into the puzzle somehow, and we will have to find where, and we don't know there will, and the, the 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 these answers will be clued in some way that is meaningful, but not a strict definition, and we'll have to find out what. All right, I've made a version of this page without that note, so we can fit it all onto the screen, and let's start solving. Oh, that's it. just realized that means I'll have to switch back and forth. Oh well, didn't think about that because I hadn't read the note before, but we'll we'll just have to deal with it. Host of the 1952 Winter Olympics. I'm not sure not suited for, unapt for, perhaps? Um, like some expectations, unmet? That would work with un here as well. Let's uh, let's look at this. Nick of 48 Hours. Nick Nolte is an actor. I've never actually seen that film, but I think he is in it. The yolks on them. I don't know, beef tartare or something? Often has an egg yolk on it. It's probably not the answer. So if this were unapt, does that help here? Blank Malcolm, Jeff Goldblum's role in Jurassic Park. It is certainly not unapt because I do know that character's name, Ian Malcolm. I've met Jeff Goldblum twice, in fact, at, uh, at jazz shows that he has played. Um, okay, singer-songwriter Jones. Nora Jones, maybe? I'm not actually sure. So what was this? Sorry, not suited for, unfit for. That's much better than unapt. What on earth was I thinking? And the yolks on them. What is the yolk on? Uh, what would you put a yolk on? Why can't I think of what that is? Alternative to this and that. The other, this, that, and the other. This does look like Nora. Direct path, a something line, I would think. And then... Dole out could be to meet out resources, for instance. Oh, is it simply fried eggs? The yolks on them, fried eggs? Is that that? Okay. I was trying to think of something you might put an egg on, but I suppose... 
that really what it is? I'll remember, I'm not 100% confident about this because it just seems too straightforward, but maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's exactly as straightforward as that. Like some cheese or some movies, melted? Melted movies? Does one of these work for that? Um, maybe it's not, it must not be melted. That doesn't make any sense. Um, resident of a Mideast Sultanate, um, an Omani, resident of Oman. Okay, well, it wasn't melted, so I was right to be skeptical of my own, my own guess there. Like some cheese, oh, grated, but that still doesn't, sorry, what does that mean with movies? Grated movies, grated? Is the T and the D, are they sort of interchangeable? Um, showing gratitude could be grateful, but those words are maybe too similar to be in a clue and an answer. I'm not really sure what's going on. Sorry. There's probably something very, it's probably just a very simple word that I can't think of. Uh, direct path could be the bottom line direct path to a solution, sort of, the bottom line. Kind of milk. Oat milk, maybe? And suns, e.g. Could be orbs, celestial orbs. Scram. Could be, what? Scoot or scat or something like that. Shoe. Oh, shoe. There we go. Another one of those. Host of the 1952 Winter Olympics. Must have been Oslo. That makes sense that it would be. Would have been at one point, anyway. Uh, Demeter's mother in myth, Rhea. And enough dilly dallying. Let's get a move on. No, let's get. Well, what was this? A C plea. Yes, yeah, C plea is S O S. Um, I just saw I saw Master and Commander: The Far Side of the World uh, on the big screen last night, which was a lot of fun. I really love that movie, and they never actually uh, put out an S O S, even though they're in a circumstance the circumstances to do so. Certainly, at least twice. Enough dilly dallying. Um, it does. Oh, right. I did know this was SOS. I don't know why I deleted that just now. Okay. Enough dilly dallying. Let's. Enough dilly dallying is how I feel about myself right now. Rathskeller decoration. Um, I'm not sure. What about this one? Oh, color of the owl in the pussycat's pussycat's boat. It was pea green or sea green. Um. It was some kind of green color from the, is it a nursery rhyme? The owl and the pussycat. I think so. What? Uh, this looks longer than what I would have thought it to be. I don't remember. Ah, that's annoying. I will remember it when I see it, I'm sure. Syntactician's drawing. Hmm. What would a syntactician draw? Syntactics. What? I don't know. A key or a legend or something? What, what would this be? What about this? Champing at the bit. If you're champing at the bit, you are eager to do something. I'm eager to find out what a few of these answers are because I'm in this, um, I have sort of theme brain going on right now where I, anything that doesn't, anything that seems like it might be not what I expect it to be, I'm, I'm thinking it's theme related, but I'm probably just I'm probably just wending my way along the garden path there. It's probably completely pointless. Okay, toothsome. Tasty, maybe? And a thin thoroughfare could be a lane, perhaps, a sort of small road. Anthropologist adjective. You could be an ethnoanthropologist. Oh. Oh, oh, right. The adjective sorry. I was thinking eth I was thinking anthropologist prefix, but no, this is refer this would be, I guess, an adjective for used by an anthropologist ethnic. You could be describing um, the different ethnic groups or something like that as an anthropologist. Someone who studies uh, humans and groups and things. Okay, enters. Um, walks in, perhaps? Is it that simple? Sheesh. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not K here. And so on and so forth. Could be et cetera, et cetera. Oops. There we go. And Beatles song with an exclamation mark in its title would be help. And enters. Um, so it could be enters as it enters data. You are entering 
something else into something, or it could be enters as it enters a room. You are the one entering the other thing yourself. Um, does that help? Does it? I don't know. Heads in? Sheesh. Old. Doesn't look great. I'll check the crosses on heads in, but it doesn't seem very good. Abbreviation on a works cited list. Well, this could be at all if you're listing authors and perhaps you're citing a work with seven authors and maybe you list the first one or the first two or the, the, the major authors and then you say at all. Lot of land, say an acre could be a lot of land, a single lot of land, maybe a single acre. And Big Bird. Larry, oh, Larry Bird, um, basketball player. That must be what this is. He must have been very tall, big. Ordinary citizen, uh, a pleb, as people could sometimes derogatorily refer, I suppose, to an ordinary citizen. Sheesh, older, hmm, what is that? Oh, is this Peyton to Eli Manning? They're brothers, they're sort of NFL playing brothers, right? So older brother. So sheesh, oh, oh, because sheesh, you could say, oh, brother. Is that what's going on here? Oh, right. Bottom line isn't the direct path. It's the, it's a B line. You make it, I was thinking that seems like a bit of an odd, direct path seems like a bit of an odd definition for bottom line. But I was, then I was thinking, well, if you just imagine sort of getting to the bottom of the sort of, look, let's strip everything else away. What's the bottom line? What's the direct path? I was thinking of it in that sense, but it still wasn't a great match. I just didn't really keep thinking about it. So it's a B line. So we're removing these other letters. We're just using the first letter of the first word plus the second word to make the answer as defined by the clue, whereas the full answer is defined over here. So what have we used so far? We've used Peyton to Eli Manning, and we've used accounting total, the bottom line which literally comes from it being the bottom line on, I don't know, profit and loss sheet or something like that. Okay, great. So there we go. We've got two of these. I wonder if we have any others yet. I don't think so, but let's keep solving. Oh, right. And I never even said the name of the puzzle. Sorry. This puzzle's entitled Expansion Pack. I see. So yes, we are expanding these answers from O brother to older brother. There we go. Okay. Looks good on suits well or something like that befits, um, something like compliments. Overjoys could be elates. A as in Agamemnon, alpha. So uh, in the Greek alphabet, um, as, as I suppose used by Agamemnon, uh, A would be alpha. Fathers could be, if it's a verb, it could be sires as in to sire a, well, I suppose actually it could be as a noun as well, a father, a sire, and a horse, for instance. I suppose that's, that's actually also plausible. Lacrimose, if you're lacrimose, you're weeping, you're teary, maybe. And a wild thing is a beast. Kemper of the office. This looks like Ellie Kemper, I think I've heard of. And director Frank Capra, probably best known for It's a Wonderful Life, but also many other movies. And looks good on, oh, it becomes you. That, that, that dress becomes you. It looks good on you. Anything you suggest is fine. I'm easy. Melon parts are, oops, rinds. The rind of a melon, straightforward enough. Small bits of dough. Oh, wait, sorry. Okay, well, let me just look at this first. Small bits of dough are ones, $1 bills, for instance. Um, but I, sorry, I just remembered we, this pea green boat that I kept thinking of. So the pea is the pea from pea green boat. And that's why I was, that's why I couldn't make sense of this clue. So now is there something, a, a longer phrase that ends with green over here? Yes, I bet it's where golfers practice short strokes. The putting green must be the answer there. Very good. Okay. So the color of the owl, owl and pussycat's boat is indeed pea green, as I think was my first guess before sea green. And and the putting green is where you practice short golf strokes. All right. Enough dilly-dallying. Let's get, this does look like let's get, doesn't it? So, all right. So this like some cheese or some movies created. Okay. That, that isn't nothing to do with the theme because this isn't, uh, we, we need two words for it to be thematic. So I'm, oh, G, it is graded. It's G rated. Wow. All right. So in the U.S., uh, the MPAA uh, ratings body in the, in the United States, G is the, the lowest and therefore least restrictive rating that can be given to a film. And G means general audiences, I believe. Okay. Uh, that's very funny. So 
um, hyphenated or a single word. Brand that comes in short sleeves. Ritz crackers, I think is what this is. And a Rathskeller decoration. Oh, is it a Stein? This has something to do with um, like beer halls, perhaps? Maybe not. I don't know. Go across could be span. Oh, maybe it is that. Go across a, I don't know, a river is to span a river. Uh, Nobelis Desmond, yes. Okay, this was stand, uh, Stein, because this is Desmond Tutu, um, Archbishop of Cape Town. Is that right? And uh, the Blank Mysteries children's series starting with the absent author. Well, it certainly looks like A to Z, doesn't it? Absent author all the way up to the sort of zealous zebra or something. Okay, enough dilly-dallying. Let's get on the move. No, let's get on the road, maybe. What about this? A wimple wearer. Yes, a, a nun wearing a, a wimple, that sort of quaint uh, headgear, right, for a nun. So let's get on the road is probably what... No, it's not. I'm, I, this is a permanently baffling answer to me as far as... I, uh, as it seems to be going. Um, to go for a spin is to try something to... Not sure. Approach could be near. To approach your destination could be to near your destination. And with 53 across, commonly believed misconception. Oh, interesting. Um, hmm. What about this? Syntactician's drawing. Oh, a tree, maybe? I'll need to look up syntactician to to, un, to to understand what I'm not remembering about that word. Is it's, I, I assume it has something to do with, with uh, someone who, um, who sort of maps meanings of things, which is why I said sort of a key or a legend before. But a tree could be also something you could use to do that sort of thing. But I, I'll need to look it up. Anyway... Uh, fit, flits here and there, gads about, maybe? No. Um, hmm. What else can I look? Connecting words in logic. Ands. And is a common part of logical phrasing. Uh, transitional phrase. Transitioning phrase, I'm sorry. I'm not sure offhand. What about this? Shenanigan. An antic. You're up to shenanigans. Antics. Biologists. Biologist E.O. Wilson's focus. I mean, it looks like it might be ants. Transitioning phrase. On the other hand, or something like that. So this, let's say this ends with an H. Does that help our commonly believed misconception? I mean, I wanted it to be some kind of myth, and that would fit here, but it's not the right number of letters. Um, I don't know. I've got to stop getting bogged down in things that I, I can't immediately get because maybe some of the other things I will, and then I'll have crosses. So vibe, vibe could be an aura. See, it's good I didn't think about that myth too far because uh, something truth, commonly believed misconception, false truth. Okay, I don't think I'm actually familiar with that phrase in that way to necessarily mean commonly believed. I don't think I knew that necessarily, but I take it for granted that as this puzzle was edited, as always, by Will Shorts, that must be right. Uh, principle could be a tenet of a belief system, for instance. Doesn't keep could be rots, as in food. Uh, produce doesn't keep, it rots. Symbol of middle America. Uh, this is a sort of mid-20th century, early maybe early to mid-20th century political uh, question that would be applied to... I don't know, a given policy or or slogan or something, and you'd say, sure, it sounds good, but will it play in Peoria? And now I think that's because Peoria, Illinois, maybe is it's possibly the geographic center of the of the contiguous United States or something like that. And so it was it was used as a stand-in to ask, well, sure, that makes sense and it's logical. It might be a good policy, but will people in Middle America? Uh, go for it. And I, I, that's what this is referring to, I believe. Okay, transitioning phrase. On that something? On that note, there we go. And on that note, I will move on to this cross here. Something avoided during awkward situations. Um, hmm. And here we have flits here and there. Gallivants. There we go. 
sort of similar to gads about, I suppose. You could be a gad, you could, you could yourself be a gad about who gallivants, uh, which sounds like an entry in the A to Z mysteries. Uh, to go for a spin is to whirl the finer things in life you might enjoy if you have the means. And if one is really down on something, one, not sure. Uh, enough dilly-dallying. Let's get on with it. There we go. Blank longhorned beetle. And an isolated hill of butte, perhaps. Um, very visually striking because they're sort of out there, not surrounded by a mountain range, usually. Uh, is really down on something. Hates it. There we go. Okay. Uh, this could be Asian longhorn beetle, maybe, in the five letters with I-A-N at the end. Neighbors, yes. Neighbors could be abuts. So the butte does not abut other mountains. And if this is Asian, food often served with gari, pickled ginger. Hmm. Theater employees are ushers. Oh, sushi. Sorry. Right, of course. Right. Sushi is, of course, served with pickled ginger, which I don't think I knew as gari, so that's good, good to try and remember. I'll um, do my best. Ready for this, one might ask, and command to a dog could be sit. All right, so we've cleaned out those answers there. Now, what have we looked at everything up here? I can't remember. No, I don't think we have. Baby's cry could be wa, maybe? Animal aptly found in feather one's nest. A heron, I think, because inside of the phrase feather one's nest, we have H-E-R-O-N. It's a bit of a shame that it doesn't cross over all of the words. If this were a cryptic crossword clue, it would really need to span all of these in order to be valid, Other because nest is um, superfluous otherwise. But this is not a cryptic crossword. It's a regular general knowledge crossword. So I'm going to say the answer is heron. And alas, um, not sure. Panache, maybe this isn't heron. Is Are there other birds that can fit in here? I doubt it. Um, I don't think so. Sorry, so what am I not seeing here? Alas. Um, and panache. So panache could be alon or, I don't know, maybe gusto or esprit or, I uh, don't know, why do I not see it? Emotionally disinvest oneself. And firing offense. Boy, Heron doesn't seem very good, even though it seems like it was the answer. A uh, question to someone who looks impossibly young. What's your secret, maybe? That's the kind of thing people say in films and things when they see someone who looks young for their age. Brosif. Uh, alas. Oh, it could be ah me or oh me, ah me, I think is sort of matches the quaintness of alas a bit better. Panache. Oh, flare. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Emotionally disinvest oneself. Let go. All I needed was what's your secret in order for Heron to help me out. Firing offense. Firing offense. Uh -huh. Um, I ran out of steam right after I said I was, I was on a roll. Uh, chemist's container could be a flask. Oh, arson. You literally commit an offense, a crime, with fire. All right. So then Brosif is amigo. Oh, okay. So a sort of um, bro -y way, I guess, to, to refer to your friend, your amigo, your, your Brosif. Okay. Giving, give a heads up is to alert somebody of something. If someone's extremely mean, they're nasty. If you're hurting, you might be achy. And a fictional... Mr. or real Dr. Spock, I suppose. Who's the real Dr. Spock? I don't know. Okay, kind could be a sort and a fair part, a booth, right? So I first read this and I thought a fair part meaning a significant quantity of some of a significant proportion of something, but no, it is the part of a fair, a fun fair, an expo or whatever. Uh, it could be a booth. And Dressage for a horseback rider. So there's a question mark here indicating a bit of punnery or wordplay. And 
I think, so I read this as dressage for a horseback rider because dressage relates to, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an equestrian uh, discipline, but I wonder if it means maybe clothing or something for the rider in a punny way. I'm not actually sure, but let's look elsewhere. Betray is to backstab and fish with a, with a prehensile tail. Uh, interesting. Um, what is it? Not sure. We haven't seen any theme answers for a while, have we? At least I don't think we have. Maybe we have, and I just didn't notice because I just interpreted them in a different way. Uh, oh, eye contact is something avoiding avoided during awkward situations. So this isn't gallivants. Or did I spell gallivants wrong? Oh, no, no, no. It's not eye contact. It doesn't fit. Sorry. Something avoided during... Oh, is it... Is it one of our, cl our theme clues somehow? And it's the letter I? But then contact doesn't have enough letters. Let's look at our... Let's look at these and see, does one of these mean something contact? Oh, communicating with, in contact. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I forgot about, I forgot how this worked, sorry. So in contact is, uh, I already forget, communicating with. If you're communicating with someone, you're in contact with them. And then something avoided during awkward situations is eye contact. So the second word is only, is only a two letter word. So we're only discarding one letter. I think that that maybe short circuited my understanding of the theme briefly. All right, we can re-enter gallivants. That was correct after all. I would have been surprised if it started with gall and then weren't gallivants. They're shared between partners, one hopes. Um, I don't know, I would have thought vows initially, but obviously it's not enough letters. Into pieces could be a part, and if the rain will really come down, it will pour. Frustrating device in an arcade. Frustrating device. Oh, the claw machine so isn't designed to be frustrating to you, I suppose. Oh, values are shared between partners, one hopes. Indeed, one does hope that. Uh, backs of necks are the napes of necks, and once more is a new. We're doing it one more time. We're doing it again. Uh, gets busy is acts, I suppose. And if you're getting top marks on a test, you're acing it. Symbols of wave functions. Um, is it size? I don't remember any of these sorts of things. It's been so long since I did anything math education related. This is sort of interesting. Sorry, we just noticed we have kind of diagonal line of A's running through the puzzle. That must just be a coincidence. Oh, there's one here as well. Three. We have seven following this diagonal line. I suspect that's a complete coincidence. It just, uh, sorry, it just jumped out at me. Uh, anyway, where was I? Into pieces. Oh, so we had a, into pieces apart somewhere else, and this would be, uh, I don't know. What about this? Pioneer of the Minneapolis sound. Well, that would be Prince, who the um, musical, the extraordinarily talented late musician who did indeed pioneer the Minneapolis sound, which is very distinctive and very, one of the most interesting things to me about the Minneapolis sound is that it uh, it basically has no bass, very, very little bass in it, which is not what you associate. It was one of the most interesting things about that about uh, that, I don't know, genre, whatever you'd call it. Uh, it's very unusual for pop music and rock music, whichever you consider Prince to be. And, uh, but it doesn't lack anything for it. It's really interesting. Anyway, quickly could be... Hmm. Not sure. And suggest with of. I don't know. Not doing well here. This looks like a theme answer to me. Fish with a prehensile tail. Let's see. Have they been? Have we have we solved enough of the puzzle to determine if the theme answers are symmetrically disposed? We have one here, one here, one here, one here. So if if this were symmetrical down below, 
we would find it here, which is what I was just looking at. Yes. And if this were symmetrical, it would be down here. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. I mean, that's also kind of where I would have expected it to be. And then similarly here and here, Mad Hatter's social event. Oh, the tea party. So we have our tea here, and that will be phonetically serving as the word tea. So we can put party in here. And then we can look back to see, is there a party in here? Oh, unlikely election winner, a third party maybe. So there we go. All right. So I just short-circuited that a little bit uh, in a different way. I guess I said something was short-circuited earlier today. Part of a giggle could be he as in he, he maybe. And a falcon's home could be an airy, a, a very high up nest. Okay, let's see. Dressage. Oh, right. This is the dressage, maybe. Dressage. Dressage for a horseback rider. And an unusual object. A curio, perhaps. An object of curiosity. Back in a way. And last name of the boxcar children in children's literature. Literature. I said that strangely. Uh, I don't no. What about, I, I think I actually read at least one of those books when I was young, but I have absolutely no memory, certainly, of their name. That's for, that, just not a clue. Disney Plus competitor Hulu um, is one of the online streaming services, as is Disney Plus. And to ask for money informally could be to hit someone up. Them's fighting words. It's on, you might say. And a wool gatherer. Now, there's a question mark indicating pun or wordplay, which makes me think this is meant to be taken literally as opposed to idiomatically. What about, what was that? Have we looked at this? No, we haven't. Excoriate. So if you excoriate someone, you really tear them apart. You, what, scathe maybe? It's scathing? It's That was an excoriating rant, a scathing rant? Not really sure if that... The thing is that works if you turn them into adjectives, like excoriating and scathing, but I don't know that if it works as a verb. I'm going to, he's really going to excoriate him. He's really going to scathe him. Doesn't really sound good. Oh, but maybe this is right because, so here we go. The dressage or dressage for a horseback rider could be a polo shirt. Maybe, I don't know why that in particular, I guess so named because they're used, people use them in polo, but a polo is a brand though. Well, in any case, I guess that I guess that's the pun. That's the pun bit is that you might say, oh, it's a polo shirt. It's for people riding horses because polo is a horseback sport. OK, so, oh, I see. To back somebody is to bet on them in a way. So Alden must have been the last name of the boxcar children. Fair enough. And when we looked at this fish with a prehensile tail. So this, I suspect, will be another theme answer. And the word probably divides, uh, divides here. So this might be the name of a fish. Let's see. Oh, a leg cramp is a Charlie horse. Oh, a seahorse. Right. Okay. So that's clever. We have our, our letter C forming the word C, S-E-A. And that's our seahorse, a fish with a parental tail. And then... Uh, a Charlie horse is our leg cramp. Yes. So how many of these do we, well, I guess we can just, we can look over here how many we have, because I think we've determined they are symmetrically disposed. And by that, I just mean rotationally symmetrically. If you uh, rotated the grid 180 degrees around its center, the position of the theme answers, the, so for one thing, the black cells on the grid would be in precisely the same position as they were before. And so would the positions of the theme answers. That's what I mean by that. So this one could be found down here. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. We ha oh, it probably is showing gratitude. Probably ends in thanks. Showing gratitude. Um, how do you get showing with... Give, giving thanks? Oh, right. Okay, it is. Yes. Giving thanks. And then, oh, that's so nice of you to say is G thanks. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Do we have all of them? I think we might. One, two. Wait, 
one, two, three. Yes, we do. Because there are three on either side of the central, the sort of axis here, and then one here. All right, great. So we solved all of the theme clues. Let's just finish off the puzzle, why don't we? Popular flooring wood must be oak and perceptive as an eye. You have a keen eye, someone might say. A cocktail made with ginger beer is a mule, a Moscow mule being the original one. And now you have um, all kinds of other mules with different spirits and things like that. Uh, wool gatherer, oh, a moth literally gathers wool. There we go. And plus is also as well. Do we ever, I think we checked all the other crosses in there. A uh, fool could be, what, a, a cow or something maybe? Big name in elevators. Otis is an elevator manufacturer. And Manhattan address abbreviation. Oh, New York, New York, I suppose. NY for New York City and then NY for New York State. Okay, harness part is a rein, the reins of horses, perhaps held by our polo shirt wearing rider. Sweet dreams are made of this eurythmics hit. I always want it to be sweet dreams are made of these, but the name of the song is definitely, in fact, sweet dreams are made of this. And suggest with of. One of the furies of Greek, Greek myth. Is it Electo? Mild expletive, heck. Cacophony, a... Poet Gorman who wrote The Hill We Climb, Amanda Gorman. I was wrong about this. Um, what is this? Suge oh, this thing suggests of something, it smacks of something. And then a quaint contraction could be shan't. It, sh it, sh it shan't be long until we finish this puzzle, I don't think. Chill could be to relax, or it could mean to make something cold. Uh, or it could be a noun. It could be a chill in the air, a sort of pall. Um, and Command Z on a Mac would be undo, to undo a command on a computer. And consequently would be thus. There we go. Space heater. Question mark. So what is that getting at? I mean, a heater could be a gun in slang. Um, space. Oh, a star. Like the sun literally is a heater in space. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Uh, okay. So what about this chill? It could be to hang. I see. To hang out, to chill out with somebody. And a cacophony is a clangor, I guess. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. And then Electo, the Furies of Greek Myth. I was almost right. Symbols of wave functions. Is it size or phi's? Into pieces. Asunder. Tear it into pieces. Tear it asunder. So it was size, which I think was my first thought. Quickly is at a run, a, a quick pace. And banded rock is an agate. There we go. Keeps a watch on. So, sorry, this means rock is in a physical, you know, an actual rock from the earth. <laughs> I don't know how... It's really sort of difficult to describe what a rock is. A stone, I guess. Is, there we go. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Keeps a watch on. Question mark, right. Keeps a watch on. Times. Keeping, you, you're keeping a watch on somebody. You're timing their performance, maybe. To revise text, say, is to amend it. 9 a.m. service could be... Hmm. <laughs> what is it? Fragrant compound is an ester used in perfumes and things. So to stave off is to avert. So what is this? Sorry, what is this? 9 a.m. service terse. What am I doing wrong? Oh, it's right. Okay. Um, what was that? Why did I not understand what it was? Terse. 9 a.m. service. Terse. T -E terse? Terse. Sorry, if this is extremely obvious to everybody and I'm just not seeing it, it must be something, it, it's it's probably like Vespers and uh, Matins. It's probably the, um, litur the uh, you know, monks would observe the different hours of the day and they would uh, say prayers at the different times of day. It's probably that. Okay, anyway, let's discuss the puzzle quickly. So this was our expansion pack puzzle by Tom McCoy 
And indeed, we expanded, we had expanded expanded answers for seven of our clues. So our direct path, our B line, expanded to bottom line. O oh, brother for Sheesh expanded to older brother. Our P green boat expanded to a putting green. Eye contact, which we avoid in awkward situations, expanded to in contact, which is probably maybe what we're trying not to be in awkward situations. Let's see. Our seahorse with a prehensile tail expanded to be our Charlie horse. Uh, saying gee thanks to somebody expanded out to giving thanks, which is also sort of similar, I suppose. And finally, our Mad Hatter's Tea Party expanded out to be our third party, our unlikely election winner. I won't go and read all of the other, the alternative clues for all of those. But that was an interesting theme. It was... Um, a different sort of theme than we usually get. We occasionally get that sort of thing in the New York Times crossword where we have, uh, I don't know, a sort of a, a addendum or a little annex outside of the puzzle that that serves, I guess, as sort of a huge revealer. Instead of, instead of having a revealer in the puzzle, there's nothing inside of the puzzle itself that that can make sense of these clues at least the full clues. You, you could notice, I mean, I suppose you could do this puzzle and, you, right, you could imagine a version of this puzzle constructed where the whole grid is the same, all these clues are the same, except there's also a revealer somewhere that says something like you need to, I don't know, expand these out. But that wouldn't be as good because then you wouldn't have the proper clues for the full answers, which we do thanks to our little note over here. Anyway, I'd be curious to know what you made of this of this puzzle. This is the kind of thing I suppose you could basically solve it without paying attention to the theme, but I think it would be confusing. I wonder how much you could get by by just sort of forcing things into alternative explanations like I did with bottom line for direct path. Because giving thanks, you could sort of almost do that. Oh, that's so nice of you to say, giving thanks. It doesn't really make sense, but you could sort of do it and say something avoided during awkward situations in contact. Again, the part of speech doesn't match, but Subject matter wise, it's kind of similar. Yeah. Anyway, interesting. Uh, and that's that for today's puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. So I'm going to move on to clues from yesterday's puzzle because there were several of those. So let's not waste any more time. And okay, Kathleen Quinn explains that civets, also referred to as toddy cats which is how it was clued in yesterday's puzzle, are not actually cats. They're more closely related to the mongoose. That is very interesting. I, 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 uh, after seeing this comment, I went and read a bit about civets. And uh, yes, of course, it's absolutely true. They're not actually cats. I never really thought about it. I always see them referred to. I suppose I must have seen the phrase toddy cats before, even though I don't think I recognized it yesterday. And I think I did think of them as cat-like creatures. But when you look at them, they're not very cat-like really. They don't look like cats necessarily. So I don't know. I don't know why I never really thought about that before. So thank you, Kathleen Quinn. Zio R95 has an explanation of alkenes, which are hydrocarbons that were present in yesterday's puzzle. Uh, and I'm not going to read Zio R95 full explanation of what hydrocarbons are, but you can if you find that comment yourself. Uh, this person does go on to say, my favorite property is that due to the symmetry of the orbitals that make up a double bond, and then he has an additional note about orbitals not being a real thing, which I'm going to skip. We can no longer, okay, I'm actually not going to read this <laughs> because his favorite thing is far, far above my head and I think would require reading the whole explanation of hydrocarbons. If you would like to learn about alkenes and hydrocarbons, there's a great comment by Zero Rod 95 that will tell you all about them. Thank you for that. And Thor Christensen explains ace in sports terms, which came up yesterday, and I don't really think I understood the, the implication of it, general, generally refers to a baseball team's best starting pitcher, and as such, the pitcher who usually starts game one of a playoff series. However, it is often also used to refer to any elite pitcher in general, which sometimes lead to teams that are described as having more than one ace pitcher. The most famous instance that comes to mind for me is the 2011 Philadelphia Phillies, who had a starting pitching staff referred to as the four aces. All right. Good to know. Thank you, Thor Christensen. Cohen points out that tat refers to a tattoo and tattooing, but uh, in yesterday's puzzle, tatting is lace making, 
And as Dragon Traces point out, this gets Chris every time. It's true. I know this has been pointed out to me before. And Laura Saxon, who I think herself has indeed explained this before, much to my chagrin, explains, tatting has two forms, shuttle and needle. Either one is creating lace by making knots. It is actually the same as macrame, but since the thread is so small, it is hard to see the resemblance. That's interesting. At any rate, um, tat, short for tattoo, is the noun, and tat, the lace making, is the verb in this clue. So that was the, I see, so that was the, uh, the tat. Right, that's right. It was clued as noun, noun and verb in some way. So Cohen got the uh, tat as the noun and Dragon Traces and Lauren Se Laura Sexton the verb. And thank you for once again explaining that. I'll try to remember that going forward. Uh, tatting. Sam, aka Frisco17, was very glad to see Sal be clued the way it was in this puzzle for Sal Volcano, apparently, as it's pronounced, according to Sam who is a star of the true TV show Impractical Jokers, where he, Brian Q. Quinn, James Murr Murray, and formerly Joe Gatto all dare each other to do embarrassing things or fun challenges in public. And whoever gets the most thumbs down for losing said challenges gets punished at the end of the episode, and they have to do things like pick up dog poop, get kidnapped, and dress up as the Statue of Liberty, jump through tables at a restaurant to find which ones are breakable, or draw X's on the paintings of the mummy and me oh and the mommy and me painting class you're leading i don't know what that is but anyway considered to be an iconic show by sam aka sam sam aka frisco 17 who solved two who constructed two puzzles that really put me through my paces in a recent constructor's corner video um one of them in particular took me i think over an hour anyway thank you for that sam and garbaz points out regarding sayonara in yesterday's uh, as a clue yesterday's in yesterday's puzzle for the answer adios. Garbaz says sayonara um, is Japanese and argues, arguably not really a good fit for adios, since in terms of tone, it's rather formal or dramatic. You would not say, and then uh, this person has the actual Japanese characters for sayonara, as a regular farewell to a friend, as you might with adios. One would say, when exam for example, when leaving school towards a teacher uh, in a formal situation, or when one is bidding farewell to someone for a long time or under significant circumstances, uh, dramatically, perhaps something like, I will miss you in English. I think that's a very interesting explanation. I think in the crossword, I do think adios is a valid, is a valid clue because uh, we're using these as loan words in English, and sayonara is certainly used in a casual circumstances. Uh, in the English language, as a as a, as an adopted word, as is adios. So I think it's a I think it's a fair clue in the um, the New York Times crossword for for an English for, for an English language crossword. But uh, I'm very pleased to know these this additional connotation of the word in Japanese. So thank you very much, Garbaz, for that explanation. And. Uh, Kathleen Quinn says, I expect you already may realize this, Chris, but in case others are unaware, Tuesday, July 5th will mark the one-year anniversary of the Daily Solve. Happy anniversary and thanks. Well, uh, <laughs> I definitely did not realize this. And not only did I not realize this was coming up, I can almost guarantee you I won't remember it on the day either. So I will try and remember on what you said, Tuesday, July 5th. I will try and remember, but there's a good chance I won't. So, but thank you for pointing it out. That is good to know. I hadn't thought of, I hadn't really considered the fact that I've been doing this for almost a year now. And that's that for today's comments. Uh, that was a long comment section today, wasn't it? All right. That was that for the comments. That's that for today's video, today's solve. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will be back tomorrow for a much quicker, much shorter puzzle with a regular sized grid on Monday, still with a theme. Uh, certainly won't be a big noted theme like this one. Do join me for that. But until then, Please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Mm -hmm.